guys, this is Caroline and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial where we will paint this Christmas card along with these pretty baubles, perfect homemade gift for friends and family. If you would like to learn the breakdown of the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint these realistic baubles, click on the top right card here to get to part 1 of the tutorial video. Otherwise, let's get started. I have with me an A5 size Canson watercolour paper which I have previously tore out from a larger sheet of paper and this would make a perfect size for a Christmas card. Using a 2B pencil, I am sketching out a few circles which represent the bubbles hanging over some Christmas tree branches. We will have a few big bubbles in front and small blurry ones in the background. I'm sketching very lightly just enough to know where the placements of the objects are because the details will be painted in later with watercolour. And this is the bubbles practice which we have gone through together earlier in part 1 of this tutorial where I shared the exact colours to use for each type of bubbles and how to build up layers to make it look realistic. We will be using these same steps to paint them here in our card. If you missed it, again I'll link it up above on the top right, otherwise it's also available in the description below. So back to our Christmas card. I decided to go with a red bubble on the right. This bubble here is drawn a little bigger as compared to the rest as it will appear in the foreground closer to the viewer's eyes, making it the main focus of the Christmas card. You may also choose to paint it with gold if you like gold to be a dominant theme colour as long as you remember where your focus point is. As we are painting this, keep in mind that we will have our brightest highlights on the top left so we will want to keep it really light and then just slowly build up more saturation around it by adding more red paints. If your highlights are getting darker, not to worry, just use a clean dry brush and lift up the paints like so to bring back the highlights. Keep building up layers of stronger and darker shades, especially on the shadow areas on the bottom right, and you'll slowly see it coming into shape. When it is dry, glaze it over with a very light wash of orange on the highlighted area. Be sure to blend it off with a clean dry brush for a smooth transition between the colours. For an extra kick, I'll add in a little bit of yellow to enhance that warm shade and give it a more glowy finish. And then I'm topping up with another layer of red and neutral tint to further increase the contrast and its circular shape. If you feel that your highlighted area is not bright enough, repeat the lifting technique to make the highlights lighter. For the top handle of the bubble, I'm just using shades of yellow and sepia to draw out the lines. Let's move on to the second bubble. We will be painting gold for this one using the three colours of cadmium yellow orange, burnt sienna and sepia with the same steps we learned in part 1 of the tutorial. Now that we are done with the foreground of the two bubbles, let's start painting the background. Since this bubble is placed a little further behind, I'll make it blurrier and more distant. Using the same steps, we paint in the red bubbles. The additional step that I'll be doing differently here is by wetting the edges of the circle with clean water. Doing this will allow the red pigments to spread out over the wet areas, making it look blurry and less defined. 
and then the rest of the steps remains the same. Next, using a goat's hairbrush, wet the rest of the paper with water. We are doing this step to paint the rest of the background using wet on wet technique for an even more soft and blurry background. Here I'm going in with the same colour sequence for the distant bubbles, starting with a lighter colour and then going down to the darker colour for the shadows. I am also allowing the colours to spread outside the circle for this blurry effect. Then using a bigger brush, here I'm using size 10 brush, grab some sap green and start filling the rest of the white spaces using big and loose brush strokes like so. Add in paints for a more saturated colour, I start to define the leaves. For the darker shadow areas, I mix sap green with a little bit of neutral tint to get this stronger dark green. Paint them around the areas, especially under the red bubble of our main focus. This will create more contrast and depth and will attract more attention to the focus point. Now I feel that my Christmas tree is lacking some bright shiny colours so I decided to add in some bright yellow orange in between the leaves by dropping in the paints like so. Keep in mind that this must be done when the paper is still wet otherwise we will end up with harsh circles without the blurry effect. And now that the paper is starting to dry, I keep building in layers of trees and defining the leaves even more with dark green lines to create more contrast and dimension. Alright, let me show you my favourite trick. Grab a small brush, here I'm using size 6, dip it in clean water and splatter it over wet areas and this will give us that lovely bokeh effect in the background. It is similar to the effect of using salt but I find this way more effective and easier to achieve. Once it's completely dry, add in some gold paints for the added shine on the bubbles. And for the final details, grab some white gouache, mix in a thick white paste and decorate the bubbles. Adding more details to our focus point can make the whole piece look a lot more attractive and beautiful to look at. For the last step, finish off with some white splatter around the card for that lovely snowy effect. And we are done. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see your version of this Christmas card. So do share them with me on Instagram. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, happy painting and I'll see you soon. Bye!